Okay, now that we've gone ahead and taken a look at how to graph a quadratic's given its equation, if you have a graph of a quadratic, can you find its equation? Now basically, if we go ahead and take a look at the different forms of a quadratic that you have, you have your general form, your vertex form, or your intercept form. In order to actually come out with the equation of the quadratic, in the general form, you need to find A, B, and C. With the vertex form, you need to find A, H, and K. For the intercept form, you need to find alpha, beta, and A. Now, how do you know when to use which one? Of course, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the type of information that's given to you from the graph, and based upon that information, you're going to go ahead and make a decision as to which one of these three equations you want to use. So say, for example, if you have three unrelated points, not the vertex, not the x-intercepts, possibly the y-axis, or uh, the y-intercept, but three points that are just all over the curve. Then what you can do is, if we go ahead and substitute those three points into this equation here, you can actually come up with three, different, three equations and three unknowns, and you can use matrices to go ahead and solve that. And we actually had that problem on the past test. Now, if you have the vertex and one other point, then of course you should use this because the vertex is always going to be h comma k and then after that if you have one other point you should be able to find the value of a. Now if you have the x-intercepts and one other point then you should use the intercept form because you'll know what alpha is, what beta is and if you have one other point you can find out what a is. Now let's just take a look at a quick example here. Say for example you have this particular parabola opening down has a y-intercept of 0, negative 8. Notice that we have the x-intercepts at 1 and at 2. Now, oh, yeah, let's just go ahead and call that 2. Now, let's just go ahead, ah, uh, hang on, let's do it. Okay, there you go, that's 1 and that's 2. So, let's just go ahead and say then, that since we know that this is going to be the x-intercepts, we should use the x-intercept form, or the intercept form of the function, because of the quadratic, because we know that alpha is going to be equal to 1, and beta is going to be equal to 2. And we also know that it's going to go through 0, negative 8. So what I can do then is I can say that f of x is going to be equal to a times by x minus 1, because we know that alpha is 1, and x minus 2, because we know that beta is going to be equal to 2. Now, this doesn't give us the value of a until we actually go ahead and substitute this particular point into the function itself. So notice that I can say that f of 0, which is going to be a times it by negative 1 because x is 0, times it by negative 2 because again x is equal to 0, that has to be equal to negative 8. So now I can go ahead and just take a look at this part here and say that, well, that's going to be 2a is going to be equal to negative, negative 8 squared, so or a is equal to negative 4. And so I know that f of x now is going to be equal to negative 4 times by x minus 1, x minus 2. And you've determined the function of the quadratic from its graph. Okay, so to wrap up, it's going to be important that you know exactly what type of information is given from your graph. And then based upon that information, you're going to go ahead and use the appropriate uh, quadratic equation or quadratic function form in order to find... The, the values of the parameters in order to come up with the actual function itself. Okay, so take a look at that. Let's see how you do, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.